Hey there, Power Appers. This is Brian Knight from Pragmatic Works. In today's video, we're going to show you how to make your app look a little cleaner and a less intimidating for your users by having a multi multi tab uh, operation for your application for your forms. So stay tuned. Welcome back. Well, in this video, we're going to focus on forms and how do we make our users a little less intimidated by lots and lots of fields on our forms. So I have an example of a pretty intimidating form for many users. Usually speaking, if you have more than eight, seven or eight columns uh, that are fields that you're asking for, you may want to consider breaking that up. Well, there's a few ways we can do that. First of all, we can build our own tabs or Microsoft has built some tab controls for us now. And this is going to help us feel more like a wizard where things are broken out over multiple areas. So let's walk through how we can use those. First of all, we have to turn these on at this time. It's still a preview feature. Very, very stable. I've been using it for some time, but it's now out of experimental mode and now preview. So you know it's going to make it all the way to production. So I'm going to start by turning this on. Maybe by the time you watch this video, these modern controls are already done, are already live. But let's show you how you can turn them on in case they are not live yet. Under settings here, we'll go over to upcoming features and just look for modern and turn this, this one, uh, try our modern controls on here. You notice it's preview. Preview in Microsoft standards for Power Apps means it is going to make it to production and they're just tweaking now. You might find things in preview for, I've seen things in preview for years. Um, so never know as far as when it goes, when the preview tag is going off, but it's some, I find these are pretty stable in this case. All right, so now that I've done that, you're going to see these new controls up top. If I go to insert, you're going to see a new modern control where you've got a whole bunch of, of extra goodness now. I'm going to look for the uh, tab control, which you can see tab list right here. There we go. And notice it's asking for a table right now. Let's go ahead and widen this out. I'm also going to make my form uh, white so it stands out a little bit more against that, that uh, bluish background. There we go. For our tabs, we have to provide a list of objects that we are, list of tabs that we want to use. So when I select it, we can pull from a table, we can pull from a collection, or we can just pull from a manual table that I type in right now. I'll use the manual table option. I generally do a collection, but let's just show a different way for the time being. I'm going to use a table function to do this. I'll open close that parenthesis like this, and then I will, uh, oh, and I will go ahead and put my open parenthesis here. Anything inside this is going to be our, our different tab names. So I'll just call this tab, tab name, you call it whatever you want to, it doesn't matter. I'll do a uh, double quote here and I'll say this uh, event, uh, you know, I'll call, call this general info, for example. All right. Then I'll do a, another record by just doing uh, this, this curly brace to curly brace. I'll call this approvals. All right, and then maybe I'll do one more for attachments, just for fun. Okay, so a really common example here. Notice it's giving us these numbers right here, the artificial numbers. If we go over here to where it says fields, we can then go through and specify what is our tab name. So you could have multiple columns here. Uh, we could have a tab, I normally have an index number so I can sort accordingly if I, if I want to like turn things on and off. I'll go back over here, go to add field and point to my tab name. Okay, if you want to default to a certain tab when they first hit a screen, we can also take, let me say here, take this general info tab. Let me just grab that tilde to tilde, or that, sorry, curly brace to curly brace. There we go. Go to my default object here, default selected items, and then just paste that in. You'll notice it immediately underlines now. So that way you're always going to start on the right tab when, this, when a user hits that first. Then you can notice you can kind of tab over like this and you get a beautiful control to make that work. You of course can do other things, other gotchas with this. I typically would put that into a container and give it a background. So if you want to make it look like it's a little more uh, stand outy as well, that's a word. Uh, let's go over to container. I'll, I'll drop a quick container in. I'll grab that, grab those tabs, cut it, paste it. And now you can, you can give it whatever background you wish. To make it, as of right now, the, the, the options are a little bit limited, are way limited on that. So you'll notice the container, though, does have the white background. There we go. So that way it looks a little bit more like what you want. You can also drop shadow that if you want and all sorts of goodies. But now you can kind of wrap that all the way across. 
You can also give it a, a different background color if you want an offset, you know, like a like a darker color. Well, that, looks still, that looks silly, doesn't it? But you can make it whatever you wish. But you'll notice that the properties are a little bit limited on what you have, including in the advanced properties. You don't have a whole lot of design work you can do as of right now. Keep this is a pretty new feature. So maybe by the time you watch this recording, you do have things like fill colors and all that. So I kept mine pretty basic in this case. All right, now that we've got that, you can, now you want to go ahead and, and reduce the number of fields. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this, and then uh, I'm gonna paste it a few times here. Let me go ahead and drop another container in. We covered this a little earlier. There we go, I'll paste it in once. Okay, come on. And the goal of this container is to give it a little bit more texture. There we go. And I, I had the wrong thing. So I, I, that's a number one mistake I make with these containers is I select the form and not the container. So mm -hmm. let me go ahead and just move that over like this. Increase my form for the time being. We have a whole other video on this. And then I'll go through and I will I'll go ahead and copy the whole, con whole container or the form itself. I'll grab the whole container in this case. Paste it one more time. This is going to be tab two's information. Okay, so we'll just go ahead and paste that in one more time. Then I'm going to go ahead, oh, I, I, I embedded it. See the problem I just did there? Let me undo that. Let me just kill that real quick. Okay, another, another mistake that's really easy to make with containers is, is nesting them inappropriately. I can't tell you how many times I've had to debug and debug and debug thinking I had a mistake where it was actually okay. So make sure you go to the whole screen and then paste that in. And that should be correct now. Okay, so now that we've got that done, uh, we kind of layered the forms on. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and turn a form on and off, and then we'll start removing some fields accordingly. So let's take the, the first form. I'll go ahead and call this con uh, general info. Okay, and I'll also rename the form so we can have uh, a little bit more FRM general. And then I'll do the same thing for this, uh, this other form right here. I'll call it container, and this will be approvals. Okay, and then the same thing for the form underneath it, just so we can kind of keep these straight. Uh, keep these straight. All right, now for our first container, this one right here, we're going to go ahead and change the visible property of it. So when are you going to see this? Well, I only want to see this if the tab above it is called tab list one. See right here, tab list one. So I'll call this tab list. Of course, we want to rename that as well. Tab list one dot. And we'll look at the selected tab. As we kind of scroll down, we can see selected items right there. We'll do selected dot tab name, which is the column that I created, manufactured myself, is equal to general info. All right, there, I'll copy that one time. And then I will look at the next one now, approvals. And I'll look at the same visible property of that one. Paste that in, and this one will be approvals and so on and so on. So now, as I kind of uh, go back into here for general info, I can go through as I scroll down, look for the stuff I wanna kill. Let's, let's also make this two columns just so we can kind of see it a little cleaner in here. There we go. And I'll get rid of all the approval stuff. There we go, approval comments, some middle date we don't need, uh, and so on and so on and so on. Uh, I'm just gonna get rid of all the, all the stuff that will be ancillary. Uh, I'm just doing two tabs here, but you get the idea. All right, so as I kind of Snuggle that whole container up to this right here. There we go. As I go to approvals, we'll see the whole other information. Information. Let's go ahead and get rid of the stuff we don't need here. And we just want the approval information. There we go, approval comments. Boom, boom. Oh, I just got rid of one more. That's all right. You get the idea. And there we go. All right. And I need to get rid of this as well. Okay. Again, I'll go to two columns. That should hopefully clean things up there. And now you can see as I kind of flip around, at a very basic level, we have uh, these, these three tabs are now lit up and can, can work. Now, how do I submit the, ind the individual pieces as a whole to the record? That's our next step. So I'll just go ahead and drop a button in, and I'll drop the button in up here in this, this container so that way it kind of feels eh, somewhat right. There we go. And of course, we would we would, pretty this up a lot more as time goes on. And let's give that a good name. Uh, save. Oh, I'm going to get right here. Save. All right. Perfect. Make sure our forms, one, one little gotcha, make sure our forms are in new mode so we don't, uh, we don't try to edit the record. There we go. 
And then for our save button, here is where the fun starts. What we're gonna do is we're going to go through and patch the records, but we're not gonna patch every individual column. Patch is another way of submitting data to any data source out there. It's uh, a little bit more difficult than something like submit form. In submit form, we can, it's much more easier to, to just say go. In patch, we have to normally specify each column that we wanna send, but in our case, we're gonna patch the whole form out to the database. So let's take a look real quick. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my submit, my submit button here, or save button. I'll do a patch syntax. Uh, I'm gonna go, I always like to stub it first, right? So this is gonna be the event, event request table. I'm gonna grab that, I'm gonna use it again here. For patch, if you want to add a new record, you'll use the word defaults, okay? If you want to edit a record, you specify the record you want to edit. So it might be like, uh, something like gallery1.selected or the first record or whatever, lookup command. You have to get the one record that you want to update. Then you would normally specify all your columns right here. In our case though, we can just say uh, frm, which is our form general, dot updates. That will send the whole form up to the database, comma, frm, and the approval information, dot updates. This works well as long as everything is in the same table. If it's not in the same table, like for example, you have expenses about this event that you want to log, then you have to gather the, the key from the last one, so that you're store, storing it to a, a variable or using the form that last update, that last, last submit, excuse me, and then you insert into the child tables after that. But if everything's in the same table, the magic can begin. So, of course, we want to do some extra work here, like, you know, resetting the forms and all that kind of stuff. But let's just kind of keep it simple right now. And let's take a look and let's see how this all works in the end. So as I go through, I'll just go ahead and call this a uh, YouTube event. Okay. Uh, Brian was here. All right. Go over to approvals. Grab my whatever approval I want here. Blah, blah, blah. And now I should be able to hit the save button have it go off the record and it has saved both of those. Again, I have not reset the form in any way or any of those kind of goodies. But now I can go over to my table and I forgot I can call this YouTube event, right? So as I scroll down, there's my YouTube event, Brian was here. And then if we add, of course, all the approval stuff, we would see that the approval status now is likely under review in this case. So I slide to the right, it now sent all of this under to one big submit statement up to the database. So this video hopefully shows you how you can use tabs and then also how you can use things like the patch syntax to give your users a better experience. Again, the goal of this is to make it where they don't have to see all those fields in one screen and get intimidated. So instead of that, if you have more than call it eight or 10 fields, break it up into multiple tabs so it's less intimidating for those users and make, them make their, uh, their experience a lot more delightful. If you're interested in stuff like this, please do subscribe to our channel to get more videos like this. We've released videos multiple times, uh, actually a day in some cases. And you can find us at pragmaticworks.com. We have a whole bunch of curated training, tens, uh, hundreds of hours, hundreds of classes of trainings. And then we also do things like hackathons where we help you build an application while you drive. And we do things like virtual mentoring where we help you get unstuck. Thanks so much for watching us today. Have a great day.